Our last speaker is Ms. Shireen Azli, Chief Marketing Officer of KPJ Healthcare Burhai. Ms. Shireen's professional journey of close to 30 years is marked by significant roles in telecommunications and government agencies. Notably, her tenure as CEO of the Malaysia Healthcare Travel Council was a period of remarkable transformation where she led Malaysia to its recognition as the global number one healthcare destination by volume in 2019 and earned the prestigious International Medical Travel Journal Destination of the Year Award multiple times. She is also deeply passionate about education, leadership development, and volunteerism, actively contributing to these areas in ways that resonate with KPJ Healthcare's core values of making a positive impact. Today, Ms. Shireen will be talking on the Malaysian health tourism industry. Please welcome Ms. Shireen. Thank you, Atira. Assalamu alaikum, very good morning. How's everyone? I don't know why I tend to get the session just before food. So you just have to bear with me for a while. I was told that I can actually go on until freely, right? <laughs> That's what they told me, until lunch. But anyways, um, I, I hope everyone is uh, doing well. Um, my, I, I apologize for my voice. Don't worry, I'm not uh, carrying any bugs or anything. Uh, I just returned from Kuwait and, you know, naturally... It's dusty and everything over there, so yeah, I get this husky voice. Uh, thank you, Atira, for the introduction. Uh, so, I, you know, I was just, I mean, I walked to the room and I saw everyone, you know, like f many of you are f uh, familiar faces. So, I've been here before uh, speaking uh, on healthcare tourism and a few other things, but it was in a different capacity as the CEO of Malaysia Healthcare Travel Council. So, uh, as of three weeks ago, I just joined uh, KPG Healthcare Berhad. Uh, as their chief marketing officer, and today I will speak again on uh, healthcare tourism. Uh, but of course, you know, the first part will be about Malaysia, uh, in a way, uh, representing MHTC. But after the second part, I will talk a little bit more about KPJ's strategy. Yeah? Okay. Um, when Dr. Musa spoke just now earlier about the potential of, uh, you know, the tourism growth for the country and, you know, as much as we are hoping to rebound, uh, you know, at full scale, but we are still, if you see the forecast that, uh, that he was speaking just now, it was about optimistically, we're still 5% below uh, what it was pre-COVID, right? But one thing about uh, healthcare tourism, it's actually quite interesting. Um, during COVID, okay, fine, we, we took a hit, everyone took a hit. But one thing that maybe you forgot, okay, we, we, our borders were closed in, I think, April 2021, if I'm not mistaken, right? First January 2021, the first tourism bubble, sorry, first July 2021, the first bubble that was open for arrivals into Malaysia three months after our, uh, our borders closed down was healthcare tourism. We actually got the first approval for medical tourism bubble to open during COVID, three months after lockdown. So what does it say? You can't compromise on your healthcare needs, right? So that's how important healthcare is. So in terms of the uh, uh, talk, talking about global trends, you know, you can see the you can see that increase there. We uh, 2022 to 2025, you're talking about 23 percent in terms of uh, global medical tourist expenditure. And in terms of trends, what I want to show you now, it used to be that we travel out to Europe those days, right? Or you know, UK is a normal destination for us to get uh, our treatments, but now the traffic is going this way. It go, it's coming to Asia. And of course, from Middle East, you know, uh, Middle East is now uh, changing their direction as well. Um, I just returned from Kuwait. I mean, the, the government sponsor, are still sponsoring patients to go to the UK, to Germany for treatments. And then when I was there, I actually went there and met up with the authorities, like, you know, the Ministry of Health, the Defence Ministry, the Fire Brigade, and was check, uh, talking to them about rerouting their patients into Malaysia. Well, specifically to KPJ, but yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to hold up my KPJ uh, hat. You see, sometimes I forgot after six years being the CEO of MHTC, but now, you know, it's all about KPJ. I have to think about that all the time. So, remind my being myself there. But yeah, we are, we are trying to reroute the traffic. However, my God, anyway, help. Kuwait, Kuwait Airways has direct flights, but they pull back for the past three months. So, 
please restore, restore, uh, re, 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 uh, put back the route for us. Apparently, they said that they don't have enough uh, aircraft. So they said that, okay, we stopped to Malaysia first. And um, they are routing it to uh, Europe because they are going for the winter holidays. But can you please help? <laughs> because medical tourism cannot... Uh, okay, the priority for the medical tourists to come into Malaysia or any country is a direct route. When you're not well, the last thing you want to do is to transit. And, uh, you know, uh, and we are quite far from Middle East, seven, eight hours, you know, so six, seven, eight hours is a long trip. And if you transit, that's a ta taxing for us. So uh, we will work with our partners to make things happen. And then in terms of growth, okay, just to show you, <clears throat> this was pre-COVID, right? We were getting about uh, 1.7 billion uh, revenue to hospitals. And at that point, one ringgit to the hospitals contributes to three ringgit to other tourism businesses. So that's the multiplier effect. And we've done studies and we have data to support that. So, uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, uh, even for countries like China, if they come normally for tourism, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they spend about 500 ringgit. Uh, for three uh, for overnight for one Chinese tourist, but for medical tourists from China, it can they can spend up to two thousand five hundred ringgit per night. So it's five times uh, in terms of spending, and also every one ringgit to um, uh, medical tourism goes to three ringgit to um, uh, tourism. So if you see that was a growth of sixteen percent. Then we had that we we were hit uh, at this point of time. You can see that even during our borders closing, we had. Revenues coming in for medical tourism. And then we picked up 1.3 billion 2022. But what I wanted to show you this year, we were only forecasting 1.5 at start. We are now picking up at 1.7. But as of yesterday, uh, uh, MHTC informed me we may even hit 2 billion. And that's already surpassing the 2019 data when we were the global number one destination in the world by volume at that point of time, 1.7 billion. And if we actually reach 2 billion this year, or even 1.7, we're already equating that. If you reach 2 billion, you're already surpassing. And look at the growth trajectory. Again, one ringgit here, three ringgit tourism. So this is an industry, which I was chatting with all of you, right? It's, it's, a, it's a need. It's not really a, a luxury. So this is an industry that if you're looking into uh, investing or looking into uh, you know, uh, growing healthcare and specifically healthcare tourism, because Malaysia is still very attractive, um, not only to this region, but now coming from uh, even Europe. And we do have patients coming from the US. So uh, as of now, MHTC uh, informed me, the top destinations coming from um, uh, for, for medical tourism, of course, we have Indonesia, of course, within South, Southeast Asia, but we are getting a lot more from the UK, from uh, US, Japan, Korea, and also we are picking up on Middle East as well. Okay, so in terms of growth, you're looking at CAGR 23% coming up to 2025. So that's the wave that we are now riding, and KPJ wants to make the most out of that moving forward. So <clears throat> the trends in 2023. Can, you can see that, you know, I mean, you're talking about wellness tourism, you're talking about um, uh, digital adoption. I think there's nothing, um, nothing new here. But it, in the end, you know, you're talking about the trends in 2024 that we need to be prepared for. And when you talk about just now the customer centricity, ours are now for KPJ. We are changing our focus to be more patient centric for locals and for um, uh, medical tourists alike, you know, so it's not about just having the technology, it's not having about having the nice five-star hotel look of a hospital, it's about having that whole patient centricity as a focus. It's important so much so that the minute I went in, I got into KPJ three weeks ago, I was tasked with the whole patient centricity, customer centricity uh, function, and now we have created a whole uh, 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 department just to look into patient centricity for for the uh, the whole of uh, KPG group of hospitals. So currently we have 29 hospitals. We are going to be 30 locally soon, and then um, we are focusing very much on patient centricity. And hence, whatever the trends that we are looking 
uh, moving forward, we are looking into how we can best deliver the services to our patients and, you know, giving the wow factor and also making sure that they get the end-to-end um, treatment that they deserve. And also when it comes to treatment, it's not, uh, we are also not focusing um, treatment when you sakit tau. It's not only talking about sakit, baru, nak pergi hospital. It's not about that. We are looking into health and wellness as well. So this is something that we are getting into. And uh, this is also a trend for medical travellers as well. So they used to travel when they have problems with you know, cancer or whatever, but now health and wellness uh, uh, packages are also very attractive for uh, travellers to look into um, the destination that they are coming to. And uh, that's something that KPJ is also building up uh, for, for uh, our local uh, and also our medical tourists. So, for 2024-2025 strategy, this is from MHTC overall for the industry. So, we want to deliver this, uh, that's a focus, best Malaysia healthcare travel experience by 2025. If you can see here, the brand will need to be re-amplified because, you know, we, we, yes, we did, uh, we, we achieved number one in the world in 20, 2019. But after COVID, we need to re Refresh the brand in a way, and then uh, focusing on the look into the markets they're focusing on. But this is the one that uh, again talking about the patient centricity, the total healthcare ecosystem. And uh, if you see in terms, I, I can share these slides with you later. But th these are all the strategies being uh, put together by MHTC and also the member hospitals. And you can see that you know we are looking into uh, in intensifying the existing market segment and also explore new markets. So for example, um, we used to have Indonesia as a number one uh, arrivals. And then we used to have China as second. But China is still yet to pick up. So similar to tourism, China now has fallen behind a little bit. So we need to develop other markets. And that's uh, why we are also focusing on uh, uh, more aggressive in Southeast Asia, South Asia, and also MENA region. But one for the hospital, for hospitals like KPJ, what we want to focus on is this area. You see, it strengthens COE across hospitals. Improving the clinical data, you're talking about governance, you're talking about quality care. Yes, Malaysia is known for the world-class uh, services, world-class delivery. But, you know, the world-class evolves very fast, especially in healthcare, especially with the technology and especially after COVID. Things like telehealth, telemedicine, things like, you know, online consultation and stuff like that. It, it used to be like, okay, you know, we have it, but we never really focus on it. But moving forward, there's something that's very important. Again, for healthcare travel, that's also important. So we are building up that and also COE when it comes to center of excellence. I mean, you can, when you talk to, like say, for example, people come to see me. I have uh, problems with my, um, I, my parents, my mother has a stroke, for example. I can't tell them, oh, you go to any uh, uh, hospitals, KPJ hospitals, um, they will take care of you. We know that there are certain hospitals who are very focused on uh, neuro uh, neurology and stroke. So that's why, that's why you should send your, your uh, patients there, you know, because that's the focus. There's other, other hospitals that are stronger in cardiology. There are hospitals that are stronger in oncology, for example. And that, that center of excellence uh, build up is very important to differentiate um, good hospitals and normal hospitals. And similarly, even for medical travellers, they want to come, when they travel, they want to travel to the place and get treatment to the place that is recognised as centre of excellence. You know, you don't want to be sending them, okay, um, come to Malaysia, we have 200 private hospitals. Come to any of them. You know, that doesn't work. You have to, uh, when they come, they will give you the medical records. For example, in Kuwait, we have nearly, what, uh, nearly 100 medical records that a patient brought to our booth. This is our medical records. What do we do? Can you tell your consultants, um, you know, uh, if they can treat me? And if they can treat me, what is the treatment plan? What is the treatment cost? What is the treatment duration? And they also have to know the hospitals that you go to, is it the center of excellence or not? Some patients even more terror. You got robotic or not? What machine do you use? You know, so that's how educated people are now. And in terms of medical tourism, that's why, uh, you know, in terms of, sorry, giving the full patient care, that's why it's important for hospitals like KPJ to focus and build our expertise in the center of excellence area. Because that will differentiate us 
from being good to excellent. You know, so that's what we are doing now. And in terms of the ecosystem, okay, we have the markets, we have the brand, we have the uh, healthcare system. Here is the rebuild phase. Um, when we pre when uh, MHTC built, built this um, blueprint, we didn't expect the recovery to be so fast. So I think if you ask me now, the rebuild phase is already here. No more recovery because if you're talking about this year reaching two billion, we already recovered fully. So you're talking about rebuild, I think it's more here rather than here. So now it's about looking at new, building new you know, uh, markets and also strengthening our position in the current market. So this is where, and also building more products and building customer uh, patient excellence. So major development areas, uh, I think you can see this self-explanatory. Uh, but one of the things that I want to highlight is also the flagship hospitals that are being, uh, being developed uh, with MHTC. And this is also again talking about flagship hospitals, COE is very important. For KPJ, uh, we are looking, how many of you have been to Damansara Dua? Damansara Specialist Hospital Dua? Satu orang aja. Huh? Tak mampu tu perception je. Just because it looks like a six-star hotel doesn't mean that it's mahal. No. Experience. Berapa yang bayar? Yang bayar experience tu apa? What treatment did you get? Tak kau consultation saja almost five hundred. There must be something else because we kept. Uh, medical, kalau consultation uh, MOH tidak membenarkan lebih daripada RM235 There must be something else Apa treatment lagi buat? Ha. Okay, lepas ni kita, kita ada consultation dengan I pula Free Free No, but seriously our uh, That's one of the attraction for medical travel Our uh, doctor's consultation charges are capped So that's why we can be so competitive in the market. So you cannot charge above, if I'm not mistaken, 235 is the maximum that you can charge for that. So there must be treatment, there must be something else, other diagnostics, couple. Ke. Tapa, tapa, I'll take it with you. But if you compare um, the prices, uh, even for KPJ, we all know it's more affordable than some other brands. Okay? Um, I know because I also pay out of pocket for my parents, so you will see the difference. But please, uh, tak pernah pergi lagi, dah masa dua. Can I invite, especially the, uh, uh, the reporter, uh, the media and everything to come and visit us at Damansara Specialist too? Boleh? Yeah. Uh, I have my team member here, Viv, tolong arrange that, <laughs> that visit. Yeah, because uh, what I want to show you is that that hospital is targeted to be the KPJ flagship medical tourism hospital. Ada video tak? Tak ada video? Ayah, okay. But that's one of the things that we want to look into. And then we're talking about uh, wellness just now, remember? And we are focusing on the uh, greenfield development uh, for medical tourism and facilitation with other agencies. Yeah? And one more thing that I would also want to highlight. Malaysia as the preferred international retirement destination. Currently, we've always ranked consistently about uh, top five in retirement destination. So whenever we travel abroad, we always get these questions about retirement. And kind of like you, if you want to retire in a, in a different country, in a foreign country, um, what would be the main criteria? Criteria not retire. Cost of living is number one lah. Can. And we know that we are affordable uh, against many developed countries. Even, I think compared to, uh, uh, even to Indonesia pun, kalau tengok, uh, in the end, kita boleh murah lagi kot. Compared to Jakarta, for example. But the second consideration is healthcare. If you don't have world-class healthcare, affordable healthcare, accessible healthcare, you won't be attractive as a retirement uh, destination. And amongst in that healthcare uh, uh, spectrum, What's important is uh, also rehab, you know, for, for the elderly, uh, uh, geriatric treatment for the elderly, and also things like macam dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, and also, uh, of course, a good retirement complex, right? So, Malaysia has consistently been the top five. In the last year, I think, we were number two, 
Our sec- we are second. So, because of that, we want to ride that wave as well and promote medical tourism. So, we expect medical tourism will grow even um, uh, faster moving forward. In terms of KPJ, if you see 2019, there's the total healthcare travellers that we got. We are surpassing that as of October 23. We are already surpassing that. But if you see the blend, uh, uh, the blue one is actually the actual health tourists that travel in. This gold one is actually expats in, in, in the country. So, we are good in maintaining or actually growing our expats uh, community. But this blue one is the one that we are now ramping up. You can see the difference. And for the next, uh, well, my, my main mandate, for the next five years until 2028, I'm supposed to grow KPJ's medical tourism with my team five times the value of what it is now. And I was thinking, okay, five times. My, that means my, do, a, do a Kali contract. I mean, two terms. Lah. Should be. <laughs> I think it should be done. Lah. But, you know, but next year is double than this year. So my, my target next year for health tourism is actually double. So if you're looking at this number now, you're looking about at 180 uh, billion, 190 million this year. Next year, they are looking at about 400 million for uh, our medical travelers' uh, revenue target. So that's a big challenge. But honestly, I feel that with the right uh, strategy, with the right focus, with the right team, with the right resources, uh, they have to spend like, on marketing money as well. So, uh, so with the right resources, we would be able to achieve that 400 million target. So in terms of our strategies, you can see these are all uh, we have now. Uh, the officers in different countries, we have the strategic partnership, advertise, advertisement media, etc., events. So we'll be more active in all the, our target countries and also for our local as well. With me, just now I said, my, I have my, if you go outside, there's a booth. There you can see my, my uh, colleagues wearing the, the T-shirt. Bangun sikit, Vivian. Promotion, promotion. KPJ Care. KPJ Cares, huh? So a bit uh, the model kat sini depan. Why we want to promote that? That is our loyalty program. KPJ is the first group of hospital in this region. Yeah, bukan Malaysia je. In this region that actually has a loyalty program in place. Which means... Okay lah, nanti kita cerita pasal you punya RM400 Tapi boleh dapat, kalau you join dapat points Points boleh redeem uh, vouchers for your next treatment Beli ubat, you know, your uh, medi- uh, any, you know anything that you have to spend at KPJ You can use this voucher using uh, redemption with KPJ Cash So please head to the booth and just scan and register yourself But the main reason why we have this Okay, again, for the interest of the invest, potential investors, because we believe in patient-centric, we want to care for our patients throughout their life. So loyalty is very important, not only patients to us, our loyalty, KPJ's loyalty to our patients as well. So that's why we are launching this, and please, you know, uh, sign up with us, and I think you dapat free points, can if you sign up today. Uh, better bagi free, free points. Huh? So, so th- yeah, and, and we, will, we, we plan to do this uh, for uh, even the medical tourists, so that they will also benefit from, uh, you know, getting treatment with KPJ as well. So, in terms of revenue, KPJ strategy, we will focus on our core business. I was speaking with, um, uh, I think Sophie tadi, siapa? Uh, yeah, I was speaking with you and she was saying that it's good that we are focusing on our core business. We are diversi- uh, diversifying from certain loss-making um, businesses, you know. So, but the re- we are focusing on the core, which is now giving that well-deserved patient centricity, patient focus to our, our, our patients in KPJ. And of course, there are going to be new revenue streams, and I say medical tourism double from the current level. And uh, I think uh, we will be more active as well in, uh, in the media and also in, um, I think, uh, being out there with all the uh, changes that's happening in KPJ now. I mean, you notice that maybe we have our own, our new uh, president. In fact, the management team is also so almost all new and strategy is being put in place uh, to move forward to be more patient centric so it's not about running a business business it's not about being a technology company it's about delivering the best healthcare for KPJ uh, uh, hospitals uh, uh, as a whole so 
With that, thank you very much. I'm keeping to the time, but I'll be happy to take any questions, especially for medical tourism. Uh, so, thank you very much again. Assalamu alaikum. Any questions? Yes. Tapi belum ke 12 lagi. Ada video tak? Assalamualaikum. Um, okay. I just want to check because yesterday I met somebody uh, from IHH. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while we were talking, uh, we were also talking about healthcare. I think one of the big issues, uh, not only in Malaysia but also globally, is the number of nurses on the recruitment of nurses. It's not that easy. Uh, so how does KPJ plan to review this employment of nurses? Okay, uh, good question. When I need can. Okay, this is very interesting because you look around in Malaysia. Siapa yang ada nurse training college under the same group? KPJ. KPJ. Cik, semangat lah sekarang KPJ kan. Dulu lah Malaysia healthcare. <laughs> you know? But no, seriously, KPJ has our uh, own nursing training college. We have our own KPJ university. You know, we, uh, I think KPJ is uh, one of the few universities that actually train also specialists. Give specialist training. You know, so we are trying to churn our own, I mean, our own nurses and our own specialists, our own doctors. You see, so our nursing college is actually not only delivering nurses for KPJ, but we also supply to to uh, all other hospitals. Uh, and the best part is that now we are getting requests from other countries to supply nurses to them. Oh, KPJ nursing uh, college, you know. So, but that's that's something that we won't look into until we fulfill our own. Requirement because it's very challenging, you know. Our nurses are being offered twenty thousand ringgit base salary in Middle East, for example. So it's very challenging in trying to uh, retain them and at the same time keep our costs affordable for for the general Malaysian population. So yes, thank you for that question. But we uh, and also uh, anyone knew about the last weekend's uh, night career fair at our KPJ hospitals. Last uh, last uh, fr Friday and Saturday, we had this night career fair at all our 29 KPJ hospitals. We had 18,000 people walking in to apply for jobs at KPJ hospitals and also the HQ. And many of them are actually nurses that we, you know, we are going to tangkap lah. <laughs> you know, we are going to recruit. Uh, but in the country, yes, that is still a challenge. For the um, MOH, they actually are relaxed skate. It used to be that MOH uh, is very strict. You cannot take uh, non-Malaysians as uh, nurses. I think they are relaxing that requirement, but they only uh, identify certain source countries that it will be allowed based on their training of the nurses. But uh, I think that's more for the MOH uh, requirement and also some of the immediate requirement for the private hospitals. Yeah, because it's impact not only uh, our healthcare, but also for the medical tourists. If you are coming like last year, and this year we have about 1.3, 1.4 million medical tourists coming into the country, which means that we need more uh, to serve them. Yeah. And we want more people to come in because if you don't have the economies of scale for our can we buy equipments, right? MRI machines and everything. If you don't have medical tourists coming in, all those treatments are going to be more expensive for us Malaysians. And when it's expensive, you go to government hospital. Then when you go to government hospital, you clog in the system. Can congestion and everything. So it doesn't work for everyone. So um, uh, the, the whole the whole thing has it's like macam the whole system has to be supported so that we welcome more medical uh, tourists, we, we have more volume, then which means we need more nurses, we need more specialists. So yeah, that's whole ecosystem being addressed. Questions? Okay, uh, is this the one? You can try lah. Okay, uh, sementara tunggu soalan seterusnya. Cik, macam commercial lah. Nak tunjuk Damansara Specialist Hospital, um, the video. Yeah, that's... Oh, this is the old one. I want a new one. Can? 
tak pernah. No, this is this is the other other yang the new one. Yeah. No, this one is without. This is uh, masa before the service is launched. Sorry, I'll get them to come up with the new uh, the other one. Sorry, uh, the new one. Nanti tengok dah masa specialist dah the new one. But uh, yeah, no questions while they find the video. Yes, thank you. Bandar-bandar besar kan, like Penang, KL kan. Okay. Uh, could you please explain the revenue distribution? Where, where, uh, yes. Ah, uh. uh, revenue distribution. Okay. Kalau uh, talking about the revenue distribution, okay. Why bandar besar? Hmm. Anu, megat dah lari. Uh, megat used to be with uh, with me also dekat MSTC dulu. So, uh, we need direct routes. Kalau tak ada direct routes, it's a pushback to medical tourists. Kecuali daripada Indonesia Indonesia, they don't mind to cross through Batam Kan, datang daripada Singapura uh, Ikut uh, naik uh, daripada apa? Uh, Tanjung Tanjung Balai uh, Or they cross to Melaka So that's why Melak Penang, Melaka uh, and Johor Dia jadi destination yang uh, fokus Because they can come even without direct flights They can come through other routes Now Uh, Kuching is also a destination because they come from Kalimantan. You know, actually, for KPJ, the highest revenue uh, recorded for medical tourists is actually KPJ Kuching. Uh. Uh, because KPJ Kuching, they cater for the whole of Kalimantan through the... Tadi berapa? 10 pintu... 10 pintu masuk kan? Datuk Musa cakap tadi. 10 uh, pintu masuk untuk daripada Kalimantan and soon to be 14. And that's why KPJ Kuching is getting amongst the highest. Uh, and the other thing, well, saya, we always heard that Chinese lah, Indonesian. Apa, Thailand tak ada datang ke berapa-berapa Bukit Kau Hitam, tak ada hospital di situ. Okay. Thailand, dia punya... Okay, language is a barrier. Language is a barrier. Dia tak cakap English sangat. Yang dekat... You mean Thailand as coming to Malaysia? Because we Malaysian travels to what? Asia, Ayla, Toka, all that place. To holiday. Tak, kalau medical dia tak datang Because of the language barrier Sebab kalau pergi jumpa, when you see a doctor Our doctor speak Malay, Chinese, English, maybe some Tamil, nothing on Thai So, how do you, and medical terms in Thai is You have the advantage of what land bound apa semua kan Ah, tapi travel. tak boleh, dia memang, and, and the, the, that one is not a target market Chinese lain eh, Chinese you can target them because many of us speak The language, uh, so senang ada translator, senang dapat medical translators. So that's why Chinese is a target. That's why Mina is a target. Arabic. We have many. We have doctors uh, trained in in Egypt who can speak the language, and also Thailand. Uh, their private hospitals are active in medical tourism. But but Thailand as uh, orang 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 Thai tak pergi sangat dekat dia punya private hospital because expensive. Their price compared to ours is double. Oh. They are private, so they go to their to their uh, apa government hospital. Ah, mm. uh, so and then lagi satu yang dekat border kita tu, the profile of the Thai Thai national uh, Thai uh, kat situ, they are not the upmarketnya profile. So they will always go to their own uh, government hospitals. See, profile of customers also very important. Ah, uh, so when you cross border, they need to be someone who can pay. So if you are not the right profile, also we don't target those markets. But like young Indonesia is different. Indonesia, even though they don't have the money, but macam Kalimantan kan, even though they have okay, the rich will come to us, but the middle class they will pinjam, borrow and everything to come to Malaysia because their healthcare system they don't trust at all. They don't even trust the doctors. Um, believe it or not, I got invited to be speaking to the Ikatan Doctors in Indonesia, which is the Doctors Association of Indonesia, to speak to them how to build trust with their people. Oh. Huh. Maknanya, they, they, they acknowledge that they are not being trusted. It's not that they don't know, they are not good doctors, but the trust is not there for for Indonesia. So when we target markets, we make sure markets yang kita target tu is solid for us. For whatever reason, they have their push factors, they have their internal factors, whatever it is. Like, macam the UK now, why we're targeting the UK? Because there are a lot of push factors. NHS system is collapsing, private healthcare system is very expensive, 
uh, the queues to do like simple knee replacement can take three years. There have been people killing themselves because they cannot wait three years for the. I think yeah, they actually uh, suicide uh, ni rate because lambat nak tunggu surgery. So these are the people that we try to entice to come and travel 12 hours, 13 hours to come and do treatment in Malaysia. So very, you have to be very niche in terms of who you target. Yeah. So that's that's uh, how important it is. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh yeah, uh, dari segi tadi apa? Um, in terms of uh, in terms of location tadi, uh, KL uh, dia, dia punya main it will be KL, Penang, Johor, Kuching. Sabah used to be, but since China closed the borders, pick up lambat. Ah, uh, yeah. So, yes, please. Anyway, just checking with you, uh, like the international travellers, when they do their procedures here, do their insurance company pay or it's out of pocket from their own personal savings or whatever? Yeah. Okay, for for, uh, there are two profiles. 60% uh, are paying from their po out of pocket. Uh, the rest uh, yeah, will be from their international insurance, like Bupa and all that. But Indonesia, they have special insurance to get treatment in Malaysia. So they don't need to have the international insurance, but they have insurance to treatment in Malaysia. Uh, so when they have that, that's a country that we, go, we should go and really target. Lah. Um, but for Middle East, it's a bit unique. Even the government pay for them to travel and get treatment. That's why uh, we went to meet up with the Ministry of Health. I know, you're, you're like going like, why would they pay to come, right? I see like, all the big eyes. And they actually sent out uh, Ministry of Health, uh, Defence Ministry, Fire Brigade uh, in uh, the Middle East country. Muhammad, you can verify for me that, right? So these are, the, these are all the, the um, uh, what do you call it, the ministries that would pay because in those countries, you see the population is very small. Like Kuwait only 4 million. Like Qatar berapa? 4 million. Itu pun, kalau Kuwait 1 million is uh, Kuwaitis, the rest are all expats. Similarly with Qatar, similarly with Dubai, you know. Dubai is even worse. They have all these uh, great hospitals but no specialists, for example. So then, when you have complex cases, they don't have treatment in the country. That's why Center of Excellence that I spoke about just now is very important. So if you don't have good uh, specialists here with the sub-specialty, for example, um, you're talking about pediatrician. Can kalau kita bawa anak-anak kita, the small ones, any pediatrician can do. But if you have uh, 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 heart problems with a child, you have to find a pediatric cardiologist. Because of their population is so small, they don't have enough cases to have and to attract and to retain those special, uh, specialists in their country. So they have to send out. So when they send out, they choose countries that can deliver the excellence in the world-class treatment. Normally, they would send to, uh, to UK, US, France, Germany. But those countries are getting very expensive for them now. So they are now looking for options. They're even sending to India, Thailand, Malaysia. So Malaysia is now, they were, they were when I met, uh, even during my time in MHDC, when I met with them, the attraction for Malaysia is because of our Muslim hospitality. And that's what we need to push. They, they like the fact that food is easy to, to find, you know, everything is halal. But we need to do a lot more marketing with them. Because currently, they still have this impression that the West is better than us. So that's something that we need to do. But yes, they send. And uh, there's one country that send annually about 1 billion yeah, US dollars annually out. That's one country. So imagine kalau you dekat DCC tu, you easily can get 10 billion US dollars being spent out for medical travel by the government. Our pocket is different. So that's the potential for us. Are there any more questions? <coughs> If there are no further questions, 
On behalf of Hong Nang Investment Bank, I would like to thank Ms. Shireen for sharing her insights with us today. Now I would like to invite Mr. Jeremy Goh, Head of Research, Hong Nang Investment Bank, to present our token of appreciation to Ms. Shireen. Please give our speaker a round of applause.